All right, next we're going to talk about some improper integrals here. And what an improper integral is, it's basically you have a function, at least in one case, there's a couple different cases. The idea is we're going to integrate this thing. Suppose I start here at 1. And normally when we were integrating, we would go up to some finite number and we would basically calculate the integral over this area and we would get a number out. But in this case what we want to do is we want to calculate we're going to calculate the integral not up to some finite number but we just want to keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going. So this thing's getting smaller and smaller and smaller so even though it's going off infinitely far the intuition is is maybe the space underneath here is getting small enough fast enough so that it'll actually turn out to be some finite number the way that we express this in this case so I want to go all the way out to infinity is we use the notation well we're going to integrate from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx and this is the idea with an improper integral. Either your limits are either the the interval on which you're integrating over is infinite. The other idea is maybe the graph is spiking off to infinity and somehow you're trying to figure out its area over that region as well. And we'll do one of those examples um, as well. So okay, well how do we deal with one of these one of these limits? The idea is what we're going to do is we're going to go from 1 up to some specific value. Usually most books like to call it t. Okay, so instead of integrating from 1 to infinity, I'm going to turn this problem 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx into an equivalent problem. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate from 1 to t but now I want t just to go keep going further and further to the right, all right? Eventually I'll get way the way all the way out there at infinity. So I want to look at it where t goes off to infinity. So now we've got the best of both worlds. We're going to have an integral along with a limit. Okay, so in these problems you basically just do the integration all by itself just kind of leave the limit out front and at the end we'll think about the limit part of it so like I said it kinda these problems can be pretty tricky because the problem itself that you have to integrate you know there could be any number of ways that you have to go about the integration process and then at the end of that you have to think about a limit so okay if I integrate this thing I have the limit as x goes to infinity from 1 to t. Again, this is x to the negative second if I rewrite this, dx. So that's the limit as t goes to infinity. And I'm now going to integrate, so I'll add 1. I'll get x to the negative 1 over negative 1, which is equivalent to negative 1 over x if I integrate and simplify it back down. So if you don't see this immediately, do it the long way. Make sure that you do get this. I've got my limits from 1 to t. And again, I'm still just treating this part like a definite integral. I'm kind of forgetting about the limit portion of it. So I'm going to plug in my limits, or excuse me, my limits of integration. I'll get negative 1 over t minus negative 1 over 1 and this simplifies down to positive 1 so I can rewrite this as the limit as t goes to infinity I'm gonna write the positive one first then I've got minus 1 over t left over and now that I've plugged my upper and lower limits in I've kinda of cleaned it up a little bit now I'm just back to a good old limit problem so in this case as t goes to infinity 1 stays 1 well, 1 over infinity, that's 1 over a big number. This is going to go off to 0. 
So I'm left with 1 minus 0 or 1. So in that sense, we can claim that the area from 1 all the way off to infinity underneath the curve 1 over x squared, this area is actually finite, and the finite area turns out to equal 1. A little bit of terminology, when you go through one of these improper integrals, as we did here, if you get a finite number out, we say that the original integral, the integral is called convergent. So in this case, we have a convergent integral. If you end up getting either positive or negative infinity out of your limit, then we call the original integral divergent. So this is the basic idea with an improper integral. Again, mechanically, this is how you deal with them. Replace your infinity with a t, put your limit as t goes to infinity, calculate it like a regular definite integral, and at the end, you're left over with a limit problem that you have to evaluate. So I'm going to do a few more examples of these for sure. Um, so definitely take a look at them.